Hey, what's up guys? I'm BJ Dell. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through a complete tutorial on how to use the exciting new animation tools in Procreate 5. We're going to talk about how to set layers to the foreground, how to set layers to background, how to group layers together and set those as single frames of animation. We're going to do a complete animation from start to finish that looks like this. I know it's basic, I know it looks simple, but it takes some time and it's really going to give you the fundamentals and the knowledge to take your animation skills to the next level with Procreate. So if you want to learn all about that and more, keep watching. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. Since this is a Procreate tutorial, Procreate's only available for the iPad, so I'm using an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. This is the first gen model along with the first gen Apple Pencil. And uh, with this being animation, when we go over here to the wrench icon, and if you go to canvas, the animation assist is how you get to the animation tools with Procreate 5 update. We're not actually gonna turn this on right away because I'm gonna work on doing the foreground and the background first. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this first layer here. And I'm just gonna throw in just kind of a brown color here for just like the ground or the dirt, if you will. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer here over top. And we'll just do a kind of sky color over top of that. So just do a line here for the horizon. Let me switch my pen here. Uh, for this, I'm using my standard inker. It's part of my brush pack on Gumroad. So I'm just gonna draw in the sky here. We'll just color drop this to fill it in really quick. So there we go, we've got the sky. And let me go ahead and make a new layer on top of that. We'll throw in some clouds here real quick as well. I'm gonna switch over to the streamline one for this and we'll just throw in some clouds here. Fill those in real quick. So we got some clouds there to kind of add a little bit extra. And then let's go ahead and make a new layer then down here. Actually, we're gonna put it all the way here at the top. We're gonna to move it from here to here and let's do some bushes here in the front. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is gonna be the foreground, these bushes down here. So this is gonna help you kind of learn how to arrange your layers and how to set them up under the animation settings once we get going. And it's really gonna kind of bring this whole thing to life once we add in our animated piece to this. So this looks kind of plain. Uh, real quick, this isn't necessary, but I'm gonna go into touch ups and go to my noise brush. And I'm gonna add some noise here to this just to kind of make it look a little bit more exciting. So if we go to the layer four, which contains these bushes, I'm gonna go to alpha lock. This is gonna let me kind of color on here without going outside of that color that I've already got down for the bushes. So let's just throw in some texture along here just to kind of make these pop a little bit more. Like I said, make everything a little bit more interesting. Kind of adds a little three-dimensional quality to this and kind of builds up the shapes of it. Get these in here real quick, little happy bushes. If you like Bob Ross. And then even still, if you want to go back in with some white, you could add in some extra highlights there to kind of bring those to life a little bit more, give a little bit more of a three-dimensional quality to them, build them up. So now that we've got that done, let's do the same thing to the clouds too. Let's just use a little bit of a lighter gray and we'll go up to our clouds. We'll alpha lock those. Just kind of throw some gray in here to kind of build those up, make them a little bit more exciting. Okay, and let's add some texture to the sky too. So we're gonna select the sky and we're gonna hit alpha lock on there. And this is something, you know, I could have done off to the side and said, oh, I've already got this pre-made and ready, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting for you guys to see the, the full process from start to finish so you didn't get just the kind of finished product thrown together in there. And then let's go to the ground layer. We're going to select that. We're going to alpha lock that as well. And let's just throw a darker brown in there just to kind of make this 
is that a little bit more interesting and make it pop a little bit more so there we go so we've got some nice textures built up on our scene we've got the foreground which is going to be this bush area here and then we've got this which is going to be our background so this is the first time where grouping is going to come in the foreground is by itself right now but these are three separate layers here so you could pinch all these together or if you wanted to keep them separated so you could go back in and maybe fine tweak some stuff later and you didn't want to pinch them together if we just slide these to the right and make sure all three of these are selected and we hit group those are going to be part of a new group now. The great thing about animation in Procreate 5 is each group uh, you can actually set as a frame, so you don't have to go in and pinch everything together. Uh, if you guys watched my previous video on the animation with the old updates of Procreate, everything we had to kind of pinch together and had to pinch the background together on every single frame, which kind of was a pain, so this kind of solves that. So now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and make a new layer. And we're going to make a ball as the animation. Something super simple. Uh, if you watched that previous video that I did too with uh, the animation, just animated a pinwheel. Um, just something fairly easy to do. And the reason why I chose that was because making the blades different colors really kind of drove home the point of seeing that animation in action. So we're going to do a ball here and we're going to do kind of that same colored lines on here. So it kind of has that uh, pinwheel feel to it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some lines in here to make it easy to color in. Uh, let's go ahead and alpha lock this layer now, which is the ball. And I'm just going to go ahead and let me draw just a little dot here in the center I'm gonna do this on a new layer just the dot so that I can erase it once I'm done but we're gonna do this uh, directly on the layer of the ball itself so I'm just gonna bring down some lines to make the parts of the pinwheel color shapes little triangles here make these a little bit wider here so we can see them a little bit better we're going to go for four basically and we'll just use some basic colors for these there's our two turn this it's not exactly perfect but gets the idea across okay there we go made that dot small enough it actually you can't really see it so all right, now that we've got that done, back on the ball layer, let's just use some basic colors here. We'll just go for a red. We'll color drop that in here. Uh, if you guys are new to Procreate, your color drop threshold, if you hold down the pen as you drag and drop, you can change the color drop threshold. So if it's coloring in too much, if you slide it here, to the left it'll turn down the color drop threshold and you can see that it's not coloring in everything now so it gives you the options to kind of play around with that let's do a yellow and finally let's do a green color here all right so we've got our basic ball in there looks a little bit plain just because everything else is textured so let's just get a black here and Let's go ahead and go back to our touch-ups and just add in a little bit of noise there around it. So it's got just a little bit of something going on here. All right, there we go. So we've got our ball. Now, what we're going to do is basically make this ball move from the left to the right-hand side of the screen. So the first thing I want to do, I want to duplicate this and then I want to turn this one off. The reason is, like I said, I'm going to drag this off to the side of the screen. And once you do that, let's just move it real quick here so I can show you. Once you drag it, once we start to bring that back in, you'll see that if it's off to the edge of the canvas, it will actually cut that off. So if we go to move this and start to rotate it, it's not actually going to have the full ball there anymore. It's going to be missing that part. So we need to make sure that we've got the, the regular full ball there saved. So with that in mind, 
we've got the the first shape here let's bring it over actually even a little bit more than that also uh, we're moving this along a straight path so because of that we want to have magnetic uh, selected down here just because as we move it you'll see that blue line it's going to keep it in uh, the perfect setup the perfect straight line the perfect plane uh, that we've already kind of established so that way the ball's not jumping up and down from frame to frame all right so that's the ball coming into the frame now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead duplicate this layer and we're going to move it on top of this one and we're going to go ahead and go to our wrench icon and we're going to turn on the animation assist now so what this is going to do is going to start opening up the onion skins here to where you can kind of see what's been set underneath and that's what we're going to be able to use for this so let's turn this on you'll see the selected layer is on top and it's a lot brighter than everything else what we want to do is we want to go ahead and rotate this 45 degrees and then we want to pull it off to the side just a little bit here all right so we're good there so let's go ahead and duplicate our base one again this is the one that we're using so that we don't have this cut off here and we're going to go ahead and rotate it 45 and then 45 degrees again and we're going to move this one off to the side here and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to duplicate this one bring that up top here I'm going to rotate it again 45 45 and then another 45 and bring that over as well once you have things colored in like this you can't really see through to the onion skin so if you want to drop down the opacity to tell exactly where you're at on that top one that's a a good way to be able to see underneath if you're doing this just with lines you don't have to worry about that but that's something to kind of keep in mind as well and then this we're just gonna kind of keep going back and forth doing this exact rotating and moving it just a tad bit each time so that we get the perfect roll of that ball constantly dragging that next layer up move this off to the side here this one I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn this one off for right now because now that we've got the full ball in here we can just duplicate this one rather than having this one sit and kind of mess up where we're at because we're going to be able to see that quite a bit now going forward so we're going to go ahead and rotate this one around pull that opacity back up duplicate this one and this is nice too now that we're back to the using the previous frame we don't have to rotate them as much all the way around starting with that previous one so this one's just going to be rotating once now since we are using the previous frame as our next one this one needs to move one more time this we're just going to keep doing over and over again moving it just a little bit every time and with this to consider what iPad you have uh, the pros you're going to be able to get more layers than what you are with the regular iPads so you might have to make a smaller screen size a smaller canvas size to be able to get a bunch of layers if you're running out of layers really quick check your canvas size if you uh, are using a smaller canvas 
it will open up more layers. It doesn't matter what iPad you're on. The number of layers available will uh, be dependent on what iPad you're using. But uh, no matter what one you're using, the smaller the canvas, the more layers you have. And now you'll see we cut into this. This last one was actually coming off the page. So we're not going to be able to duplicate these anymore. We're going to have to go back to our original one down here. We're going to have to duplicate this one now and bring it up to the top. Now we need to see where we were. We had the yellow over here. So get the yellow lined up and then rotate it once. And this is just going to be where it pulls off the screen here. Okay, so go back down here. We're going to duplicate this one. Bring it back up to the top. And with this one, the blue was all the way at the top. So we need the blue to be 45 there. Drag this off to the side. And a couple more and we'll be finished with the ball. The one thing we'll have to remember to do is turn off that ball we're using basically as a reference because we don't want that to show up in our frames. Our last one, red, was here. So red needs to be at the top. So we're in the perfect position for that. I think a couple more and we should be done. So we'll duplicate this one, bring it up to the top. Take that once, 45. And I think one more and we'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one now that we don't need that anymore. Put this in here. And this one, green was kind of at that corner angle this way. So right there should be good. Okay, so now that we've got all these done, you can see that it goes from cutoff here on this left hand side to a cutoff on the right going from left to right across the page. Now the next thing I want to do, and let me look time wise, we're at 17 minutes, we're good. Okay, so what we can do right now is I kind of want to have a trail lead off, like the ball's rolling through that. Uh, dirt, it's almost like that brown sand, so we can have a kind of trail off through there. So let's go ahead and turn these off for a second. I want to get it down to there, and let's do basically one all the way over here so we can see where it's at. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's make a new layer. We're going to put this one underneath that ball there. And I'm going to go back here because the way that the onion skinning is working here, we can't really see everything. So I'm going to turn the animation assist back off now so that that way I can see everything. I want to see where I'm putting this line in the dirt. And then let's go ahead and turn off that foreground too. So we can kind of see where this is going to lay out at. I'm going to use the, I think the touch up noise brush here and let's get a lighter color of the sand. Let's just draw a line. I'm going to have to change the settings on these to get it right. So I want it to look like this ball is leaving this trail in the sand here. So you want to make sure it comes off from underneath the ball, kind of trails off to where it starts there. Okay. Looks good. So we've got that done now. This is going to walk you through how to make groups. Like I said at the beginning, uh, grouping actually is treated as a frame in the animation of Procreate. So what we want to do is we want this line basically in every single frame, but we're going to have to change where the line's at. Obviously, when the ball's over here, we don't want the line clear over here. So we're going to have to go and do some deletion. But 
we're going to duplicate the line first. And then we're going to basically make sure that each frame of the ball has a line underneath it. So we need to keep duplicating and keep dragging and dropping this line down underneath every single frame of the ball. This is a very kind of wash, rinse, repeat type of thing. Like I said at the beginning, this is a very, very basic tutorial. I'm not sure why that just did that. Where am I at? I'm there. Let me go back here. Oh, I think it's because they're stacked up is probably why. I probably had a little bit of a light line that you couldn't really see. Uh, and we won't be able to see those once we turn these other layers off. So I just noticed that, that big white section there. But as you add these layers on top, we've got some opacity there. And as these layers build, it's going to get lighter or darker. In this case, it's getting a lot lighter because each layer is going on top of each other. There we go. Uh, but like I said, this is a, a fairly simple kind of animation, uh, but what this tutorial is doing more than anything else is just kind of walking you through the, the foundations and the tutorials of how to use the program itself, getting you kind of familiar with how these groups work and how the layers work. So we'll get all these in here and then we'll walk through everything after that. All right, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and turn off all of these layers. Just so we've got one at a time to work with. Okay, so this one's good. You can see there's no overlapping here. So what we're going to do, we're going to slide these to the right and we're going to group these two together. Did that work? I don't think it did. Slide these to the right and group. Where did it go? Right all the way down there, and I'm not sure why. Okay, let's start. Maybe it wants to group from the top to bottom. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Usually it should just keep those as a group up there. So maybe let's start from the bottom here. Let's try that and see. Let's turn these off. We'll start from left to right then. So obviously here... We don't want any of this visible, so we're actually just going to delete the line on that one. We don't even need that one. This one, same thing. We don't even need that line, so that was kind of unnecessary to do these. Some of these, yeah, we didn't even need, so same thing with this one. We don't need. This one's where it's going to start. So let's go ahead and go to this line here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and erase I'm actually going to use the airbrush for this just so it doesn't do such a harsh line around the ball itself once we get to that. So there we go. All right, now that these are done, let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and take this one and this one. Oops, this one and this one. Let's group these and see if that stays in the same spot. Yeah, see that stays in the same spot. I'm not sure why that other one is moving that down there but we didn't want that so let's go ahead and turn these off let's go to the next one and we're going to do the same thing we're just going to erase that line let's go ahead and group these now turn those off let's go to these two go to that line let's erase that now we're going to go ahead and group these together Turn those off. Let's go to this next one. Select the line. 
once again a very wash rinse repeat sort of thing we're going to group those together now we'll turn those off let's go to these two select a line erase this now let's group those together and then turn off the layer go up to our next one go to the line and we'll group those together and you'll see at the end of this video it uh, kind of shows you exactly how long uh, you know doing an animation takes this is going to be very basic so uh, if you found the video and you thought wow this I, I thought I was going to learn how to do you know a full-on animation with a character and everything like that um, just see how long this is taking for a simple ball and understand that's why that I went with this approach just to kind of get you going obviously doing a full-on animation with a character and like a whole walk sequence and stuff like that is going to take absolutely forever it would be a eight nine hour tutorial uh, and I'm, you know, kind of wondering if people are actually going to sit through this one, uh, seeing as it's going to be about half an hour. Or so we'll group those together, turn that off, and group these after we erase. Group. Then we're getting up to the part here where we're not going to have to do as much. It's going to be almost like the beginning to where we really don't need to erase here on the side. Okay. Group these together. And I think that might be it. Yep, that is it. So we are good. Um, now we just need to go ahead and group these remaining ones together. Hopefully they stay in the same spot where they're supposed to, which they are. As you're going through and grouping, though, like these, you need to make sure that the layer is actually turned on here. If you group these together while these layers are not visible, it will just basically erase them. So make sure that they are turned on as you select them otherwise you're going to end up with just some blank stuff there we'll group those oops had too many selected there Let me unselect that one there we go okay so now we've got everything there. Let's go ahead and turn everything back on here. Make sure everything is selected and visible. And then we will go to our animation and see the fruits of our labor, so to speak. Okay, so we've got everything selected. You can see now it's all visible just because uh, we don't have the animation feature enabled yet. We turned that off, so we're going to go ahead and hit Animation Assist again here. Now you're going to see in this timeline down here, our first frame is our bottom, which was our group that's the background, the basically the dirt here, the ground, the sky with the clouds. And if we go full, uh, all the way to the right forward, we've got the foreground here of the bushes so what we need to do to set this as a background is we need to select this frame and we need to select background what this is going to do basically it's going to keep that in every single frame no matter what and same thing here with this one we need to select this one and select this as foreground so the background thing this is really nice because initially like i said with the previous animation thing if you wanted a background you had to kind of pinch the backgrounds together on every single frame which was a pain so this saves a lot of hassle so now that we've got that one set to background that one set to foreground you can kind of see as i'm going through here the balls basically coming up over top of the background but yet it's sitting behind and goes behind that bush since that bush is in the foreground so let's go ahead and play this and see what it looks like and there you go as you can see 
trails from left to right it's got that nice line that it's leaving in the dirt and that's our finished animation uh, from here we can change some stuff if we want to we can change the frames per second if we want to drop it down make it go a little bit slower this is uh, set at five right now so you can see it going a little bit slower if you want to go faster you can do that this is set to loop right now too so it's basically going to the right finishing and going back to the left we can have one shot to where it just goes and it stops or we can have ping pong as well so let's do that one we'll play it on ping pong and it's just going to go from left to right of course with that it doesn't look all that great because it's erasing the line in the sand as it's going back uh, so let's just do the loop and just kind of watch it play there and that gives you an idea of how to use all the different new additions to Procreate 5's Animation Assist. Shows you how to use the different groups, how you combine those. And like you can watch and look through here, each of these as their group just take up one frame of animation. So just use this kind of as your jumping off point. Look at it and kind of get the feel of how you can make stuff happen. Uh, it doesn't have to be a simple animation like this with a ball, but just wanted to show you this because the ball's going over top of that background but it's coming behind this. So think about some cool stuff you can do with this and definitely share away. I wanna see what you guys can do. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video too, if you found it helpful, if you learned something new, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And if you are new too, don't let it end here. Go up to that video tab, look at the different playlists. I've got a ton of other tutorials on the channel and don't want you guys to miss out on any of the content that's been posted previously. So as for me, I can be found online bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.